So in this video, we're going to go over Charles Law, which is another one of the gas laws. And this one deals with how volume and temperature are related to each other. Okay, so Charles Law, here we go. So Charles Law, same thing, right? We're only seeing how two variables interact with each other. And in this case, we are going to see how volume and temp affect each other. We are going to keep pressure and amount constant. Okay, so we're only changing volume and temperature. All right, and the beautiful equation that we get is you actually get a, like a fraction. Okay, so volume one divided by temperature one equals volume two divided by temperature two. Okay, this is your initial condition. This is your final. All right, volume, you're gonna have B in liters. Temperature has to be in Kelvin, a million billion percent. Okay, you can get away with, you know, using a variant of liter. So, you know, milliliter, centiliter, whatever. You cannot forget to switch from Celsius to Kelvin. Ridiculously important. Okay, so whatever unit of volume you were in to begin with, if you were in liter, you better end with liter. And again, temperature has to be in Kelvin. There's no exception. Okay. All right. So that's that dude. All right. That's the, your actual equation. V1 over T1 equals V2 over T2. And <laughs> this is silly, but if you, if it helps you remember, okay, a T kind of looks like it's going to have a fraction sign, right? Like right here, you kind of imagine it being like a fraction. So whenever you have temperature, temperature's on the bottom it actually works out, okay? So whenever you're dealing with temperature, it's going to be on the bottom of your uh, whatever law you're dealing with. So if you had volume and there's a temperature, temperature is not going to be next to volume. They're not going to be multiplied together. It's going to be volume one and temperature one, not I, kind of looks like a division symbol, right? So V2 over T2, if it helps. Okay, so remember it's one on top of the other. All right, Charles Law. So these dudes are actually, I'll bring this back. All right, they are directly proportional. Meaning if one of them goes up, the other one also goes up. If one of them goes down, the other one also goes down. Okay, uh, a good example of this is if you've ever been rafting in summer, because we live near a river. So if you've ever gone river rafting, it's my dog. Uh, you will actually rent a raft in an air conditioned place. Okay. So you will go to, you know, wherever you go to rent the raft, you will rent that raft in the air conditioned place. And that raft is actually not fully blown up inside the air conditioned room. Okay. It will like, it will be squishier. You will feel it. Okay. It is flatter. There's a reason for that, okay? Because if I take that raft out onto the river and it's, you know, the middle of July or beginning of August and it's a bajillion degrees outside, um, the temperature is obviously going to increase when I'm outside. And because the temperature is going up, it's actually going to affect the volume of that raft. The particles within the raft are going to move faster. They're going to push that raft more. So it's going to expand the volume. And it's a really good thing that inside the raft store where it's air conditioned, it's not fully blown up. That way there's actually room for the raft to expand when you're out on the river. If <laughs> they had actually blown up the raft to its full capacity when it's air conditioned and you take it out on the river, that thing is going to expand so much because of the temperature heating up that you could get a pop in your raft. That would be bad, okay? Um, another example, a lot of times we'll do like balloons heating up. So 
like if you put a balloon and you put it over something hot, the balloon will actually expand. If you put a balloon like in ice water, that balloon will contract, it will get smaller. Those are all good examples of Charles' Law, okay? And the way you would have this beautiful graph, okay? Temperature versus volume, okay? Temperatures typically are our independent variable, right, on the x-axis. It's really easy to control the temperature. You, you turn on the stove or you put it on ice, right? This is the thing that I can control very easily. Typically, the volume is the thing that's affected because of your independent, so, be, you know, your dependent variable, your independent variable. All right, typically. And the way this looks is as one thing goes up, the other thing also goes up. Easy, okay? All right. I think one example, and we'll get the concept. We talk about this forever. All right, you have a balloon filled up with helium. And it has 2.8 liters of helium, okay? I'm just abbreviating, you can hear me. You don't need to write down every single word, it'd be ridiculous, all right? And it's in an air conditioned room at 20 degrees Celsius. Those are my beautiful at symbols, okay? I then, take my helium balloon outside on a summer day for whatever, a birthday party or something, right? Take it outside where the temp is 38 degrees Celsius, which is about uh, 100 degrees Fahrenheit. Okay, so we're imagining a nice hot summer day, okay? What is the new volume of my helium balloons. Let's find out, okay? Easy, this is V1 over T1 equals V2 over T2, okay? And we plug this stuff in, except you absolutely have to have this in Kelvin. So don't solve for anything yet, you have to convert these dudes to Kelvin. So I take 20 plus 273 is 293 Kelvin. And I take 38 plus 273 is a number 311 Kelvin. Okay. I use these numbers, right? I only use my temperatures in Kelvin. All right. So volume one, I just plug in now. Volume one is 2.8 liters divided by my initial temp of 293 Kelvin equals, I don't know what my volume two is, that's my unknown, divided by 311 Kelvin, okay? And you can solve this any which way you like, but if you have two fractions set up, right, you can do the butterfly method, whatever. I don't care how you solve it, right? It doesn't matter whatever way Solving this makes sense to you is good for me, okay? If you did it this way, let's get up a little bit, right? You'd get 2.8 liters multiplied by, do it in parentheses, 311 Kelvin, which would equal V2 times 293 Kelvin, okay? Multiply those two dudes together and divide by 293 Kelvin. These cancel, so I'm solving for V2. Kelvin and Kelvin cancel, and I get that my volume two is equal to, just plug in 2.8 times 311 divided by 293 in your calculator, you get 2.97 liters. Okay, so your volume has actually increased, which makes sense because the temperature's increased, okay? If I had to draw my initial and final conditions, okay? My initial balloon versus my final balloon, okay? Initial conditions, I didn't change the amount of particles, right? So if I started with three particles, I ended with three particles. My temperature, however, increased, 
right? I went from 20 degrees Celsius to 38 degrees Celsius. I went from 293 Kelvin to 311 Kelvin. Okay, so my arrows should start smaller and they should end larger to show that the temperature has increased. Okay, initial versus final conditions. All right, and just real quick, I wanna make sure that you understand if I did not switch to Kelvin, if I screwed up, okay, if I totally forgot and left it like this, left it in Celsius, okay, and I said 2.8 liters divided by 20 degrees Celsius equals V2 divided by 38 degrees Celsius, and I did the same thing, and I solved for V2, 2.8 times 38 divided by 20, I would get that V2 is equal to 5.32 liters, when in reality, I should get 2.97 liters. Okay, so this is vastly different and super wrong. So please, dear God, remember to convert to Kelvin. Okay? As Charles Law, volume and temperature, how those two things affect each other. All right?